cuts. Let's turn to David Tafuri in Washington. He's an international lawyer, a former campaign foreign policy advisor to Barack Obama, and a former United Nations and State Department official. Thanks for being with us. So we were talking about about $15 billion of foreign aid from the United States per year. It's a drop of the, in the bucket in terms of uh, GDP. But what kind of impact does that aid have, developmental aid in particular, in your experience? Well, you're correct. I mean, it's a small percentage of our federal budget. The American people apparently think uh, we spend about 26 percent of our budget on foreign assistance. So there's an education that we need to do about what foreign assistance budget goes into. You know, Holly, you put in a, a, a very interesting tweet yesterday that showed that our military, we spend three times what the closest competitor spends on our military. Military and foreign assistance funding go together hand in hand. So with our foreign assistance funding, we do programs like what we're doing in Syria and Iraq right now, which is alongside the military effort to fight ISIS. Take the operation in Mosul, which is mm -hmm. finally starting to go well on the military side. After we push ISIS out of Mosul and the rest of Iraq, we're going to have to rebuild Iraq in order to prevent ISIS from coming back. That's one example. But some example. people would say we have problems at home, David. They say we have enough problems at home. We have joblessness at home. We have jobs that have been shipped overseas. Why should we spend 50 billion U.S. dollars of our tax money to help, you know, an HIV clinic in Africa? It's not helping us. I mean, this is what some people would, would say to that. Well, it is helping us because it is helping uh, strengthen our national security. So, for instance, if after we push ISIS out of Iraq, we don't help rebuild Iraq and we don't make the governance right and get the governance right, something like ISIS is going to return to Iraq and it's going to threaten us again. So there's no reason to think that we can't change foreign assistance. We can't do it better. We certainly can. And I'd like to hear this administration come up with proposals to do it better. But if we're going to mm -hmm. spend a lot more on the military and a lot less on foreign assistance, we're leaving aside a strategy that really requires both both of those to go together hand in hand to help develop the countries and prevent countries from from becoming failed states and to combat terrorism abroad yeah and by the way George W Bush is not remembered by Middle Easterners in general for having ba made very good decisions in terms of the Iraq invasion and many people have uh, said that that is what eventually led to the you know after having toppled the Saddam Hussein regime what led to the insurgency the, and so on and so on but in some parts of Africa, George W. Bush is beloved, and very few, few people know that, because some U.S. foreign aid money went to some very important initiatives in Africa. In fact, in 2008, George W. Bush was in Tanzania. He had this to say about spending American money on medical care in Africa. Listen. The strategy we put in place is working, and Congress needs to make sure that this uh, HIV-AIDS plan, PEPFAR, uh, gets reauthorized for a five-year period of time. We don't want people guessing on the continent of Africa whether or not the generosity of the American people will continue. So it's interesting, isn't it? This was 2008, and it's a very different tune we're hearing from, potentially, from the Trump White House. Yeah, I mean, President Bush is one of the un unsung heroes of helping combat AIDS in Africa. Like you said, not many people know that, but his support for that has had an enormous impact. It might be his you know, greatest foreign policy achievement during his term, especially given some of the travails he experienced uh, during his presidency abroad. So that's also an important part of what we do with assistance. And I would be very hesitant to see us cut that assistance. You know, the proposal that Trump has put forward for increasing defense is more than we spend right now on foreign assistance in, yeah. in complete in total abroad. So and I would like to see us uh, reprogram, do a little better job of foreign assistance, but don't cut it so much, especially given that we're going to increase military spending. But one interesting thing, and you've been posted abroad, you spent several years in Baghdad as well. And in my travels, I found that usually when you have foreign aid, and I'm talking about development aid here for projects, for schools, that kind of thing. It creates something that's very difficult to measure, which is goodwill in some populations abroad, something that military action will never achieve, it has to be said. And this also, I mean, is this also a risk here that you might lose some of that goodwill in some parts of the world where U.S. money is helping, you know, with clinics and schools and that type of thing? 
Yes, absolutely, and I'm glad you raised that because it is an important way of sort of projecting what America is trying to accomplish, the good things America is trying to accomplish abroad. Take, for instance, all the bad will that came out of the executive order, the travel ban, and, and the way that was viewed in the Middle East. If we simultaneously then cut assistance to the Middle East, it's really sending the wrong message. We're now making it harder for refugees to be resettled here in the U.S. Fine, that's President Trump's choice, but you would think he would then spend a little more to take care of refugees abroad in the Middle East. If we don't do either, we're really sending the wrong message to the Middle East. It's potentially disrespectful and it's harmful to the development of these countries and to the goodwill that we're able to project with these programs. All right, David Tafuri, thanks very much. We really appreciate, appreciate you joining us from Washington.